All righty, guys, let's talk a little bit about the quarterbacks that were down at the Senior Bowl um, this week. Spencer Rattler with the best performance of all the quarterbacks. You know, it was a chance for Michael Pratt and Joe Milden to maybe try to get into conversations about the fifth and sixth rounds for those quarterbacks. I think that Pratt has more of a shot than Joe Milden because Michael Pratt was a guy that didn't turn the ball over, had a lot of success in winning at Tulane. Joe Milden has so so many physical tools in terms of he can run. His arm is the biggest arm in this draft class. So that in itself is very intriguing. But Joe Milden has also, at, at college, he would turn the ball over interceptions wise and he came from an air raid offense which is so different than NFL teams want to run in the National Football League it's going to take some time of transition and then is Joe Milton going to enjoy being a backup quarterback you know is he going to be a big resource so that's the thing a lot is that you have guys like Sam Hartman that are going to be selected before Joe Milden, and it's not because Joe Milden is more talented. It's because Sam Hartman was in a more pro-style offense. If you have a quarterback that is in a pro-style offense, he will be selected in the draft. All right, you look at DTR at quarterback, uh, a little bit smaller, not you know has a decent arm for sure, And he was a really good player, but also the reason why he was taken in the fifth round is because he worked his way in an offense, in a Chip Kelly kind of offense. And I wonder with Milton in a pure air raid scheme, you know, Hendon Hooker last year was taken pretty late in the process, also because maybe due to injuries, all right. But Joe Milton this week at the Senior Bowl, he threw some ill-advised turnovers, and he needed to have a big-time week. He didn't really have it. Sam Hartman, physical limitations. Michael Pratt, you know, has an all right arm, but again, doesn't make every single throw. Doesn't have great consistency throwing the ball. Don't love his mechanics. Um, so, so with the quarterbacks that were at Mobile, I do like Michael Penix Jr. All right, and Bo Nix as quarterbacks. I think that Michael can find a good scheme that can that can help him. All right, read defenses quickly, get the ball where it needs to be. Nobody's better at throwing from a clean pocket than Michael. He could drive the ball down the field. He can make every single throw. Um, he has a chance to be a very very good um, player. I actually think now that I think of it. I think that teams, even in the top 15, are going to be interested in Michael. Then you have Bo Nix at quarterback. I think that, you know, we've seen him mock to places like the Vikings, like the uh, Denver Broncos, the Pittsburgh Steelers could potentially be interested in Bo Nix as a quarterback. Bo struggled a little bit the first couple of days. Now, Michael Penix has more arm talent than Bo Nix. Joe Milton has more arm talent, I would say, than Bo. But Bo, I would say, you know, can throw the deep ball well, all right, meaning he can lob the ball deep. Um, He can really attack the middle of the field. Um, And and the fact that he was listed at 6'2 meant that he probably grew an inch or a half inch since he was in college as an 18-year-old at Auburn. All right. And and that happens to be very good for Bo Nix that he got he got, you know, that is that his height is six two. That happens to be good. And and he checks that box because a lot of times he doesn't play big on film. Now, Zach Wilson, also six foot two, doesn't play that big on film doesn't look that tall. Ironically, Rattler is six one, but plays pretty big on tape. All right. And Playing big on tape means that the quarterback looks taller than he is, means that he could really control, you know, the middle of the field and the offense. And it looks like Bo out there at times, like when the pocket isn't clean, he'll fade away from throws. Where a Baker Mayfield is more bulky, he'll hang in the pocket and he'll make throws when the pocket is collapsing. But Bo Nix going to a Sean Payton or a Kevin O'Connell offense would be a perfect fit for um for him all right and I would like to see that happen because you know Drew Brees as a quarterback is similar to Bo I I mean I'm not saying Bo's ever going to be Drew Brees I'm just saying that their play style coming out of college you know Drew Brees was a better college quarterback than Bo Nix at Purdue I could say that except Bo Nix rivaled him a little bit 
but um, this past year. But Bo Nix is somebody that has, you know, has really good mechanics. He has really good mechanics throwing the football, all right? And he doesn't have the natural arm talent of a Michael Penix, of a Caleb Williams in the class. But I do like what Bo can offer, and I think he's going to be a first-round pick, all right? Just like kind of how Derek Carr was like a you know a high second-round, late first-round selection, I think Bo Nix is going to go in the first round. I think Denver's going to be very interested in him. There's so many quarterbacks that are on this market that, that where teams really need quarterbacks. The Vikings need a quarterback. The Raiders are probably going to move on from Aiden O'Connell and look to get um, a quarterback. Washington is going to look to get a quarterback. New England's going to have a new starting quarterback. Atlanta's going to have a new quarterback. There's a lot of teams out there that are looking for their quarterback of the future. And, um, and it's going to be very interesting to see what happens. But I want to talk about Spencer Rattler, and I want to talk about why Spencer Rattler can really be a successful NFL quarterback. Rattler checks a lot of boxes, and he checks boxes of, of guys that, you know, you look back at the NBA draft, and a guy like even, what's his name, Porter Jr., who plays on the... Um, uh, what, what, who's the guy? Michael Porter Jr. plays on the Denver or Derek Lively, R.J. Barrett. Guys that are ranked number one in their class, all right, from a talent standpoint, they do get drafted high because the talent is there. Like Brian Breezy is that example out of Clemson. All right, Brian Breezy was the number one player in um, in that cycle. Now, I will tell you this is that Spencer Rattler was the number one quarterback. He went to Oklahoma. He had Lincoln Riley as an offensive coordinator. It didn't work to, you know, to an exceptional level. Caleb Williams ended up taking his place, and he was run out of Soonerland, and he had a lot of adversity, a lot of people wanting his downfall. He, he, you know, allowed himself at 18 and 19 years old to be filmed on that Netflix show, QB1. And there he kind of came off brash at times as a brash competitor, you know, especially to the other players on the team. It seemed like, you know, in some cases, like he was above the other guys on the team that he quote unquote wasn't humble. And I could see how people could take that from that, um, from that video, from that show. However, Spencer Rattler, was known to be the villain, the cocky quarterback. That's what every that was the narrative around him and pretty much any everybody could say that about a 19-year-old which I thought was unfair. Spencer Rattler when he went to South Carolina, even the Gamecock fans were worried because of his reputation uh, that he would be the same way. And in fact, he he showed in fact it was as smooth sailing as ever. He was a tremendous leader. They even lost like Jaheim Bell to uh to to uh they lost you know Raheem Bell to uh Florida State in the process you know they they lost a lot of talent on that they even lost Stogner back to Oklahoma so they lost a lot of talent on that side of the of the ball at South Carolina and Spencer Rattler didn't complain and Spencer Rattler helped Shane Beamer in South Carolina you know they ended up beating Clemson and they, which was incredible, and they even beat Tennessee to end Tennessee's hopes at winning a national championship through for six touchdowns. So he was pretty good at South Carolina. At home, Spencer Rattler was great in home games at South Carolina. All right? But everybody said Caleb Williams, the more emotionally mature, has the locker room at Oklahoma, but then at USC – we saw Caleb Williams show some, you know, emotional instability at times, you know, on the sidelines and whatnot. And really Spencer Rattler showed even, in my opinion, from, you know, again, I'm not I'm not involved in, uh, I'm not, you know, at USC's campus or South Carolina's, but Spencer Rattler seems damn mature. I'll just say that. And it shows you that people grow. And, it you know, it shows you the media can just get on people and vilify people. Um, early on in their careers and you're really under a microscope when you go to college and it is why NIL and all of this is important because it, you know you're not a regular student when you're when you're in college all right so 
Spencer Rattler, not only did he battle the adversity at Oklahoma, but he also has the physical gifts, okay? He is 6'1", which is all right. He can run around. He can make, you know, challenging throws. He has a good arm, very, very mobile, can improvise well, and, and also played in pro-style systems. You know, the Marcus Satterfeld offense at South Carolina that is now at Nebraska, that's a complex offense. That has a lot of, like, Joe Brady. That has some Matt Rule tendencies. That has some NFL tendencies because Satterfield came from the Panthers. And then you look at a guy like um, Dal Loggins, Dell Loggins as an offensive coordinator um, was under Adam Gase for a very long time and in like kind of that pro style West Coast world. And I'm telling you that that offense really prepared Spencer Rattler to shine at the senior bowl. So he's been in a pro style offense. He hasn't been working with the best weapons. There weren't incredible weapons. You know, Xavier Leggett's offensive skills can also be attributed to Spencer Rattler. And Spencer Rattler, in terms of his footwork, he's really improved in his footwork. And he's played in big games. And again, he's been under the microscope since he was 18 years old. And guess what? When it didn't work out at Oklahoma, he could have... He could have tanked. You know, he could have went somewhere and faded into oblivion, but he didn't. You know, he spent two years at South Carolina honing his craft. And then again this year when they dealt with transfers and their offensive line was pretty much broken, Spencer Rattler stayed the course the entire way. And for that, I'm really proud of Spencer Rattler. And to me, he can really be, if you get him in the middle of the second round, you do create an offensive scheme that is very much like, you know, a Minnesota Vikings, Kevin O'Connell scheme where, you know, you're creating easy completions off of play actions, a lot of deep overs, you know, I think that it's perfect. Um, you know, like even I'm trying to think of a, of a really good, you know, creative scheme, um, Of course, I love the McVay scheme because I love, you know, creating play action on first down. I love getting easy access throws. Shane Waldron does that a little bit with Geno Smith. And I think that if he plays in a real pro style offense, okay, where he has, you know, discrete reads and he plays in a very organized offensive system And he has some playmakers around. You know, he has good tight end play. I think tight end play will be very important. I think him attacking the middle of the field will be very important. Spencer Rattler can absolutely be a starter in the NFL and can be a good starter in the NFL. So I wonder, you know, I think like a Pittsburgh should look at considering Rattler. I think a lot of teams should. So I look at Bo Nix. Bo Nix and Rattler have a lot of things you like. They both are above six feet tall. They both have big enough hands. They both are quarterbacks that are mobile, that can throw on the run, that can escape pressure. They're highly touted quarterbacks, number one and number two in the in the class of 2019. And these are quarterbacks that have battled adversity at one stops and, and have bounced back and have felt have dealt with adversity and bounced back stronger. They also have a ton of snaps under their belt. You know, you look at Brock Purdy and and all of the snaps he had at Iowa State. And there, when you see a lot of football, you get better. It was a problem with Trey Lance at North Dakota State. He didn't see enough, enough football. There could be exceptions to that rule. Like maybe Josh Allen didn't see a ton of snaps at Wyoming, but Josh Allen also could have went to the NFL a year earlier. But getting those reps in college, that is key. It's key to when you step foot in the NFL, you're ready to roll. Justin Herbert was that way at Oregon. So I really do like this quarterback class. I like the COVID year, meaning I like the fifth year. I want it to just be called the fifth year. Of course, I hate uh, you know everything that happened during that time in 2020, but I like how kids get a fifth year and they get a chance to get their masters. I wish that college sports would allow for five years instead of four. All right, I think it would be better for the future of student athletes. Okay, and then people are going to stay. Why? Why not get the six? I think five is. I think five is fine. Not 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 obsessive. I think six years could be too much, but five years plus a redshirt year you can be in college six years you get your master's nil all of that so that's kind of how i view the quarterback so it's going to be interesting where all of them end up